So, there is a course page. So, for this you can go to uh, my home page under teaching you will find CS748 this, uh, this semester. So, in the course home page you can see the lecture notes and assignments will be posted and mid sem and sem will also be posted there, they will all be take home. Uh, and there are also some ideas for uh, advanced topics. So, if you want to give a talk, half an hour talk, then you can pick one of those topics. That will be optional. Uh, other grading distribution will be uh, four assignments, mid sem and end sem. Okay, so, maybe 30, 30, 40 percent. It is not uh, fixed, but around, around that. Okay, so, the topic is uh, arithmetic circuit complexity. So, so, arithmetic is probably not a very good term. So, now instead we use algebraic. So, this is really a course on algebraic uh, complexity theory. Uh, so, this is uh, an extension of uh, complexity theory course. So, in complexity theory you must have or in TOC you must have seen Turing machines, right. So, instead of Turing machines we will use in this course a different model which will be in some sense uh, stronger than Turing machine okay, and it will be uh, more algebraic for sure. So, classically computation is modeled as a Turing machine. So, this is what you see in uh, theory of computation. Uh, ultimately, you start with automatons and push down, push down automata and so on, but ultimately the, the real model which subsumes all the models is Turing machine. Uh, and uh, so, may, maybe I should quickly do a recap of Turing machine. So, so a computer program is uh, seen as a Turing machine, as a Turing machine description. So, how do you see uh, a C program as a Turing machine description? It is reading from the memory and is yeah, so Turing machine. So, so for Turing machine, you can draw a transition graph, or a, you can define a transition function. So that transition function is basically what a C program or any computer program describes. Okay, so you can translate. It's only a translational issue. So you translate uh, a computer program uh, uh, into uh, a transition function or this transition graph of a Turing machine. Now. Uh, what do you do with memory? So, a, a computer program for example, wants to store something in a variable or if it is an array then you may not even know how many variables, the variables may be unboundedly many. So, how do you simulate that on a Turing machine? So, for that you use the tape, right. So, that is it. So, the control, the transition function control is finite, that is your finite program and whatever memory the program is using that is actually unbounded, but for that purpose you have the tape in a Turing machine. So, the tape is unbounded. Okay, so, this is how you, you can immediately translate any computer program into a Turing machine description. So, so let us uh, go into a bit of notation for that. So, Turing machine notation would have uh, an alphabet, state and transition function delta. Okay. So, where so gamma, q and delta. So, gamma is the alphabet of the Turing machine. So, 
so for us the alphabet uh, we can take it to be just 0 1 okay that is what uh, is enough to represent any other thing that you do on com in computers so let us say uh, there is the main elements are 0 1 letters are 0 1 but you may also need some special characters like start symbol and blank so this is the start symbol this is the blank symbol okay so so on the tape what you will you can read is uh, initially it is all blank uh, with a start symbol let us say on the left end of your tape. So, there is only one start symbol everything else is blank infinitely many blanks and then once the computation and you can assume also that the input is written in the initial part. So, that will be 0 1 ok. So, start then 0 1 for the input string and then after that you have the blank infinitely many blanks and on that the computation begins. So, uh, so, so, the remaining part of the tape can be organized as the working uh, space for the algorithm. Nothing is not implied. Right. So, we will use the simplest Turing machine description which is left side is a start symbol and then the tape stretches to infinity on the right. And uh, it is a single tape, but actually for one complexity class we will need another tape which we can call the work tape. But for most other most of the applications one tape is enough except when you want to uh, specify how much space was used ignoring the input. So, if you want to ignore the input then it is better to talk about another tape that we can call work tape. So, there is this uh, input tape and there is a work tape. So, Q is the set of states. So, uh, there are again two distinguished states and beyond which you, you may have your own state, but at least you should have the start state and the final state. So, Q s and Q f ok. So, these are the two distinguished states that you will always have in a Turing machine. So, start is obviously uh, when the computation has not begun and when the machine reaches Q f then the computation just halts and whatever is there on the tape is considered as the output ok. Now, meaningful computation is one where q s to q f there are finitely many steps ok. We never talk about infinitely many steps, infinitely many steps means that there is no computation, the computation failed ok. So, whenever we say computation we would mean that q s to q f finitely many steps were taken and an output was given. So, finally, delta is the, de is the transition function. So, transition function basically uh, tells the Turing machine or the head of the Turing machine uh, how to move and what to do ok. So, so at any point of time uh, the co co configuration of the Turing machine is given by what is there around the head and uh, what is the state. So, based on this what should be done next is decided by the transition function. So, that is basically your uh, one step of, of your C program execution ok that is exactly what, what a computer program tells you. So, delta mathematically is a function that takes uh, it takes as input current state. I am using gamma square because uh, I am assuming two tapes. So, there is a input tape an input head which is reading input bit and uh, the second one is the work tape head which is reading the bit at the current work tape head. So, those three things will then decide how these heads should move and wha what should be the next state. So, and, and what should be written by the head in the current position 
okay so the tapes can also be modified by the head so state to go to what to write and finally uh, where to move so either stay or left or right okay so this is the transition function description uh, since the since q is finite and gamma is finite uh, delta is also finite okay it has a it has it just has a finite description and you can think of delta as your c program or your computer program it's uh, really the same thing okay let's use color so this this part is the head movement Okay. Uh, you cannot write the start symbol. No, no. So start is uh, always at the left end. So it should be gamma minus. Uh, Ideally, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, not all transition functions would make sense, uh, but that would be taken care of by your program or by your algorithm. So you would always write a meaningful algorithm and then just translate it. So in this notation. looking at the algorithm is uh, is scary because the details here are too many right i mean this is completely non intuitive so we never actually work with this notation uh, we are doing it in the first class only to formalize what computation is on a turing machine but obviously when you when you try to solve a problem then you find an algorithm in a very intuitive high level notation okay not this low level so an example uh, any questions about this since this page will be gone okay so an example configuration is so you have a control in the start state so qs is the state of this control and you have these tape and the tape has cells so this is the input tape and this is the work tape okay so the start symbols are here and then you have the bits and then in the remaining ones you have the blank right so the input here is for example 101 and uh, the start the state is start state so the computation has not begun and there are two heads uh, so these for example are the two heads okay the input tape head and the work tape head and then as the uh, starting from this looking at delta the configuration will change that will be called one step okay and then so on so you don't know how many steps there will be because the the tapes are infinite actually the because the work tape is infinite so uh, since the work tape is infinite you don't really know how many genuine different steps that there will be there could be anything from 1 to infinity so this model basically is enough to capture any real life computation that humans have ever seen okay there is nothing beyond this model and uh, yeah any questions about this so this model this models everything that we know uh so turing machines abstract every possible uh man made device or even otherwise okay so till now it has uh, always been true that whatever computing device you think of either man made or natural uh it's 
processes can be modeled this way. Uh, the reason why we are defining it is just to make sense of time and space. Okay, so, time uh, in this notation would be the number of steps. for a given x. Uh, so, you are interested in solving some problem and you are given an input x on the input tape and how many steps your Turing machine takes that is supposed to solve the problem that will be called the time taken to solve x, uh, but we never really talk about a single input. right? we always talk about a, a in all inputs of length n right so number of steps should actually be is always seen or it is meaningful to see number of steps as a function of n how many bits x has right we should we never care about a, a specific input we we actually work with uh, all the inputs of length n and so number of steps is just a function uh, that is the time complexity of a problem and space is the number of work tape cells used. By this Turing machine on x, right. So, space is also uh, a function of uh, size of x which is which we are calling n. So, both time and space are functions of n and uh, space, space we do not consider the input length, okay. we just consider how much of the space of work tape was used. Uh, this is usually, this has no significance except in, a, in one complexity class, uh, otherwise you can just look at one tape and everything is happening there. Once you have defined time and space as functions of n, you can define complexity classes. Okay, this is what we do in a complexity theory course, computational complexity theory course. I would not go into all those issues, but let me just talk about the main ones uh, in case you have forgotten. So, for a function f, okay, real value, positive real value, would say, uh, we can talk about complexity classes. So, uh, the most important one is uh, deterministic time, so d, d time f n and the second important one is space f n. So, these are what is d time f n? This is the set of all those problems that can be solved on a Turing machine on some Turing machine in time big O of f n and space f n is the set of all those problems that can be solved on a Turing machine uh, in work tape space, work space uh, big O of f n. So, problem solvable in big O of f n time and this is problem solvable in big O of f n space. So, uh, so based on this what are the complexity classes you already know? So, what is the most natural specialization of f? If you take f n to be a polynomial then d time uh, polynomial overall polynomials will be polynomial time complexity class right so so this leads to a zoo of complexity classes so there are hundreds of complexity classes if not thousands 
that are currently named and studied. So, we will only be talking about P which is union of d time uh, n to the c for all c. Okay, so, if you look at all the problems any problem or if you look at the set of all these problems that are solvable in n to the c time for some c, c should be an absolute constant right like 1000. Uh, c is constant means that c is not a function of n, okay, c, c is independent of n and c you are taking everything. So, this is the complexity class p which is deterministic polynomial time and uh, correspondingly you have p space. which is union of d space or here we do not use d because d is not important in space. So, uh, polynomial space is the class of those problems that you can solve uh, in workspace n to the c for some c absolute c. And uh, furthermore you can define uh, you can look at variations of Turing machine. So, for example, if your Turing machine has the ability to use non determinism, which means that the transition function in one step has multiple choices, okay. instead of uh, transition function being a function, it is a relation. So, if the transition, if you have a transition relation delta, then that is called an NDTM, non deterministic Turing machine and uh, the corresponding complexity class is n p. So, n p is the union of non deterministic time n to the c for all c. Okay, so, this is uh, n time is basically on a non deterministic Turing machine. And uh, finally, uh, I have log space which is a very small class because these are the set of those problems, these are those problems that can be solved in log space. Okay, so, this is the log space complexity class, this is a very small class. Uh, so, if you want to compare the classes then a simple um, consequence is or sequence of uh, containments is log space is contained in, it is contained in p and p is contained in, uh, we have defined, well we have defined n p also, it is contained in n p and uh, n p is contained in p space we have defined and where is p space contained. Uh, so, that class we have not defined, but there is a class where you can take uh, d time f where f is an exponential function. So, then you get exp. Okay, so, problems that can be solved in uh, time 2 raise to poly n. So, instead of poly n it is 2 raise to poly n. So, 2 raise to n to the c for some c. So, these are the problems in exp and then based on this you can also based on exponential functions you can also define x space. So, x will be then contained in x space and uh, just like an exponential function you can look at a doubly exponential function. So, 2 raise to 2 raise to n to the c and that will give you doubly x. Okay. Yeah and so on. So, there is no reason to stop this is this, this is an infinite hierarchy, but uh, we do not know whether these containments are strict. Okay, so, many of these classes could actually be equal. So, what are the open questions? So, do we know whether log space is equal to p? We do not know, right, that is an open question. Do we know whether p and np are equal? Yes, that is an easy guess. Uh, 
do we know whether NP and P space are equal? Yeah, and so on. So any question you ask, you, you it will be a question mark. The, so the reason is that whenever you are comparing uh, different resources, then to date we don't have a good understanding. So log, so space versus time questions, or deterministic time versus non-deterministic time questions. So all these will be will be open. And uh, the ones which are known is when you compare the same resource. So for example, P versus uh, X, that is the same resource, D time. So one has polynomial and the other has exponential. So that actually there is a theorem that they are different. Okay, so you know that P and X are different, but then uh, in the middle NP P space may go either way. That we do not know. And similarly, P space is different from X space. Okay, so that is a strict uh, hierarchy. There is a theorem which we cover in complex three courses. Okay, there are also randomized versions of this. So you can now you can look at a third uh, uh, variant of Turing machine, which is uh, probabilistic Turing machine. So now the transition function still a relation, just like in NP, it is a relation. It can from one uh, configuration it can move to two configurations, but there is a probability attached to those events. So let's say it moves to uh, one of the two configurations with probability half. Okay, so when you do that, then it's called a probabilistic Turing machine. It is like the trans, like your C program. Your program is uh, flipping a coin in every step. Okay, so that's a probabilistic Turing machine, and that gives you randomized classes. So using probabilistic Turing machine. So these are uh, for P there is uh, there are several versions ZPP, RP, BPP and uh, something which is much bigger than NP, this is PP and everything is in, all these things are in P space. So ZPP is, uh, it is what, do you already know, zero error probabilistic polynomial time. This I think is also called in older literature uh, Las Vegas algorithm. So Las Vegas algorithms uh, have the property that uh, on a given input instance x, the algorithm, whenever the algorithm halts, it will give the correct answer. Okay, the, the only tricky thing is that maybe the algorithm takes a long time, but the probability of that is guaranteed to be small. So with high probability, the algorithm will halt soon like in polynomial time or polynomial many steps and uh, the all the guarantee the other important guarantee is that whenever it halts it gives the correct answer so this is why it is called zero error it is also called uh, these algorithms are also called las vegas yes so the expected time complexity is uh, yeah, I will not go into the formal definitions of these classes. Uh, in RP, so RP is a randomized polynomial time. Uh, this is one-sided error. It's also called one-sided error. So if your string x is a yes string, then it may make an error. But if your string is a no string, then it doesn't make an error. Okay, so this is one-sided error. Uh, BPP is both sided error. And this is called uh, bounded uh, probability uh, or bounded error probabilistic polynomial time. So 
so bounded error because uh, the whenever the algo so algorithm will stop in polynomial time there is no question about that but when it stops its answer you have to take with some confidence if it is saying yes uh, in the answer then uh, or it, it is saying no the probability of being correct is more than let's say 66% okay so there is no uh, i mean both side there are errors but they are bounded errors so these are very good uh, uh, practical algorithms okay so in practice you would be happy to use a bpp algorithm if it is fast you don't really need the full power of p you don't really need deterministic polynomial time uh, in practice so many practical algorithms are actually uh, bpp algorithms the probability is taken as free uh, in all practical applications uh, pp is probabilistic polynomial time this is uh, something very bad so here the algorithm stops and uh, whatever it says the chance of it being correct is is only half it can be very close to half so so this yeah there is a reason why th this is not good so error could be half here so both sided error and it is half and uh, all these problems uh, they can be solved in p space okay there are many probabilistic versions you can also look at uh, the quantum model and then you will get different complexity classes but that i will not mention here there is a course running in parallel on quantum complexity okay uh, and finally there are oracle based classes so oracle based classes are yeah this you may or may not have seen for example np to the np so what does that mean right right so in the so you have a non deterministic machine uh, a turing machine and uh, it has access to a subroutine that can solve for example sat okay so whenever uh, this this non deterministic turing machine wants to solve sat instance it just transfers this sat instance to the oracle turing machine to the oracle uh, to sat and an answer is given immediately that is considered one step okay so yeah so it is clearly uh, a very impractical situation you can never implement it because you can never get a subroutine to sat but uh, assuming that there is a subroutine what can you solve okay so so those are the problems in np to the np uh, what can you solve in non deterministic polynomial time so this is called sigma 2 okay this is defined as sigma 1 and then you can go cr crazy with this so you can look at uh, np to the sigma 2 that will be sigma 3 this is called sigma 3 and uh, so on okay so this uh, is a hierarchy which is again not known whether it's uh, tight or not whether it's a strict hierarchy or not these are open questions well because even the in the base of the hierarchy this is an open question p sigma 0 okay so everything here is an open question and this hierarchy is called polynomial yeah so this this hierarchy is called polynomial hierarchy so if you take the union of all these classes in the limit it is called ph well there is no limit just the union so the union of all these is called uh, ph and everything in ph can be solved in p space okay so uh, so you can see that in inside p space there is a 
there is a huge amount of diversity okay this uh, this hierarchy is supposed to be an infinite hierarchy and this is all inside p space okay so p space contains pretty hard problems uh, believed to be even harder than np although we don't know whether np and p space are different but if you believe this this hierarchy to be strict then between np and p space there is a uh, there are infinitely many classes which are all different increasingly hard so there are some natural problems which are actually in sigma 2 but not known to be in sigma 1 and in sigma 3 not known to be in sigma 2 yeah but we will not be going into that i think so so these are the things you learn in uh, a complexity course and then you compare these classes and you prove theorems about uh, uh, which one contains which one and, and so on so in this course we will take a different route we will uh, define again complexity classes and we'll study computation but using a different model okay and that model will be uh, in many cases related to turing machines but it also will have different properties okay so we'll we'll look at those things in detail so this course will take a different route to build a zoo of complexity classes yeah and we are doing this uh, mostly for fun but it is not all fun because uh, if you prove theorems in this uh, uh, different computational model Uh, strong enough theorems then they will also mean something in uh, in the classical complexity class sense okay so we are really studying uh, we'll ultimately we'll really be studying natural problems okay so in this model when we prove hardness it will also mean hardness generally so it will not will it will not just mean that it is hard for our algebraic model it will actually mean that it's hard in real life Okay, so there will be a strong connection, and so this uh, this abstraction using algebra is highly motivated. Okay, this is not uh, just for fun. So yeah, any questions till now? Before I give some definitions of the algebraic model. So instead of seeing computation as a sequence of simple steps. as a sequence of uh, very simple steps right this is what a turing machine does so turing machine divides computation into many steps each of the steps is trivial okay so there is a sequence of trivial steps and in the in the end something highly non trivial happens right this is how the turing machine views computation uh so we instead want to view it uh, as an algebraic expression so we'll view it as an algebraic expression so that will be the main uh, point of departure from what we have seen before and uh, so what is this uh, computational model so this we will we'll call it arithmetic circuit as the title suggests so uh, an arithmetic circuit well let me first say in uh, in words before i write uh, so arithmetic circuit is basically it, it will have input in the leaves it will be a tree where the input will be fed in the leaves and uh, then there will be gates like addition multiplication gates which will add or multiply the variables and that will give you polynomials 
and after a sequence of uh, such layers, in the end, the output will be given, which will of course be a polynomial. Okay, so the circuit is a tree that computes a polynomial based on the leaves as variables. So that is an arithmetic circuit. So an arithmetic circuit is circuit C. So since you want to add or multiply, uh, you want to work over a ring or over a field. So you can think of just integers. So basically, if, if there is a variable x, you can multiply it by a number, let us say 10, and then you can add another number, and then you can square the whole thing, and so on. right? So, so in the base, formally speaking, there should be constants with addition multiplication operation. So, that, so this is what a ring is. But you can simply also think of integers. Uh, so over a field f, is a rooted DAG. Okay, directed acyclic graph as follows. So there is this root which is important that will give you a single output. The other important um, places are the leaves. So the leaves of the DAG or of the tree the leaves are the variables x1 to xn, these are called the input variables. And the root of this tree outputs a polynomial. So this polynomial is C x bar. Okay, so x bar is just uh, the variables x1 to xn. So what you have seen is uh, you know, know the input, they are in the leaves and uh, you know the output, it is in the, in the root. And the output is considered a polynomial. So this polynomial lives where? What is the polynomial ring where this polynomial lives? So this is the polynomial ring f x bar, right? So these are the set of polynomials in n variables, constants from the field f, right? So, so now we are talking about something else, right? Uh, in the case of Turing machine, we are talking about uh, uh, computing a function that outputs 0, 1, a decision problem. Here it is not that is not what we are doing. So here we are now talking about computing a polynomial, right? The polynomial as a whole. So this is not a functional question that we are solving. We are actually solving uh, uh, something more formal than a function. We are actually outputting a representation, the polynomial representation. The internal vertices. are gates. So in the tree, these internal vertices other than root and leaves, we call them gates uh, and they are basically just doing addition multiplication. So star or so addition multiplication or addition in the polynomial ring. And uh, right, the the internal so the edges in your tree these are called wires. Right, since the whole thing we want to call a circuit, it makes sense that uh, 
think of these internal vertices as gates and the gates are connected by wires and the current kind of flows from the leaves to the root okay, in, in that direction. So, the wires uh, can be used to multiply whatever is flowing on them by a constant, field constant. Okay, so, basically it is just scaling up uh, whatever is whatever is fed into the wire. So, it can scale it up and then you can add two such things by a gate or you can multiply two such things uh, by the multiplication gate. So, basically this model can compute any polynomial right trivially and they have constants. Uh, they have constant labels to do scalar multiplication. So, this is the full model. Okay. Any questions about this? No, if you want to make an analogy with Turing machines, then uh, well then you have to talk about function. So, the Turing machine computes a Boolean function and here if you uh, want to simulate the same thing then you can for example, maybe you can say that uh, I will only evaluate x i z 0 1 and, and the computation will be modulo 2. So, then the output, um, I mean although the output is still a polynomial over uh, the finite field with elements 2. Uh, so, even in that case actually arithmetic circuit is computing something more than a Turing machine. So, because Turing machine will only give you an answer 0 1, but arithmetic circuit will give you the whole representation of that function. So, is there like uh, so, I have said that Turing machine computes a value uh, while arithmetic while this circuit model computes a function. Okay, it is actually it gives you the function and then it is for you to evaluate it. You can evaluate it at any point. So, this uh, from the very start it is actually a much stronger model and it is highly algebraic as you can see, uh, it is not combinatorial. But, uh, in a sense, this would also be it is only computing polynomials. Transitions in the Turing machines and the internal, if you write the internal working as a function, mm -hmm. and that could be any function, and not all functions could be captured. Could be captured as polynomials. Yeah, that. Um, yeah, so there are differences for sure. Yes. Yeah, you. These two are not equivalent. Even like a natural way to see like problems like sorting modeled as polynomials. No, no, no. So, to get to an equivalence uh, between circuits and Turing machines, you have to look at the model of Boolean circuits. So, Boolean circuits is uh, uh, where the gates are only computing and or not. Okay, so. Well, in some sense it is stronger, in some sense it is weaker, it is in, incomparable. So, very strictly speaking, it, the, these are the three incomparable models, Turing machines, Boolean circuits, arithmetic circuits. But there are some similarities and uh, you can still uh, think of any one of these three as modeling real life computation. Okay. So, once we have defined the model, we have to define uh, uh, the resources here, right? When do we say that the circuit is a good circuit or it's a bad circuit? Uh, because as you can see, I mean, 
already you know that it is, it is a complete model, so it can compute any polynomial, right? How do you do that? How do you model a polynomial as an arithmetic circuit? Start with the uh, right, a polynomial is polynomial with you can compute by multiplication gate and then when you have computed all the monomials you scale them up and then you use an addition gate right so so this you can achieve in uh, just two levels uh, addition multiplication and leaves so it it is uh, maybe i should write it down it can even not only monomial by monomial written and written. So, any polynomial has a depth 2 circuit, right? Depth meaning uh, in the first layer you have addition, in the second, in the bottom layer you have multiplication. So, this is a complete model. So, this is why we say that it is complete complete model of computation uh, but that will not be enough uh, that by itself is not enough because we also want to talk about the resources because ultimately we want to say that some polynomial is easy for circuits and some polynomial is hard for circuits so for that let us now define the parameters right the resources the resource parameters so that is basically something very natural so the number of wires is called the size of the circuit so let's say number of basically the the graph size the tree size so the size of the dag is the size of the circuit Okay, so, uh, so size of this graph, uh, directed acyclic graph includes uh, vari the leaves and also the edges and also the vertices. Right? So, this uh, the combinatorial representation size is, is the size of the circuits and uh, sometimes you may also, but so this is ignoring, this size is ignoring something in the representation. So, what is that? it is ignoring the constants which are present on the on the edges or the wires right so, so these i mean in practice somebody can object and say that what if the constants are huge so ignoring it is not natural uh, so sometimes you also include the uh, bit size of those constants so sometimes we include the bit size of the constants on the wires. Yeah, but formally speaking, we will not do that. We will just, con we will continue with the size as defined by looking at the graph only. And that is the basic resource in algebraic complexity theory. So we only look at the graph size. So, the question is always uh, that given a polynomial, what is the smallest graph you can design? And naturally, the depth is just uh, the lo uh, length of the longest path from a leaf to the root. So, a max path from a leaf to the root determines the depth of C.
right so so you have size and depth and as we have already seen that depth 2 is enough actually it can compute any polynomial in the polynomial ring but then what will happen to the size well size will be just as big as the number of monomials yeah so how many monomials are there in an n variate d degree polynomial right so that is a bad thing so number of monomials is equal to n plus d choose d for an n variate d degree polynomial right so n plus d choose d is uh, something like um n by d to the d or it could be d by n to the n depends on what is bigger but uh, for general setting this is exponential right you are really talking about uh, in fact i should put a constant here so if you take d equal to n so you are looking at 2n choose n right and 2n choose n is like 2 raised to n so this is this is clearly exponential in the in the arity and the degree uh, of a generic polynomial so if you look at the representation at depth 2 then the size is necessarily very very large for almost any polynomial it's exponentially large right so that is the worst representation that you can have so we are not interested in those representations although they exist or at least they exist we are interested in the smallest representation right so we'll we'll formalize that later but you get the idea uh of the blow up that is happening and finally degree of c so what is the degree of c for an arithmetic c where at the root yeah so right so we want to define degree to be the maximum possible degree at any intermediate at any vertex so degree of c refers or is the degree of the intermediate polynomials computed in c okay so so the reason is that it may happen that ultimately everything cancels out and at the root you get something very very low degree but that does not mean that the circuit computation needed that lower degree so we here we only want to define bounds so when we say degree of a circuit we mean the maximum possible degree at any uh, vertex not the degree of the final polynomial although that is also important but uh not in the definition in the general definition uh okay so let us look at an ex a small example so let us look at the polynomial x1 plus x2 to the 8 minus x1 plus x2 to the 4 right so if you expand this out how many monomials uh, you will see sorry that's too less this has this has 40 this has uh, 14 uh, monomials right so this uh, first part has 9 and the second part has 5 and they don't cancel they are of different uh, degree right the first one is just homogeneous degree 8 the second one is homogeneous degree 4 so you have 14 monomials uh so obviously you have a depth 2 circuit with how many with size yeah 
much more than 14 because you have to compute the monomials and then you have to add them. So, it will be 30 or so the size uh, or even more. So, that will be a bad representation. There is a much more compact representation, right. So, the compact representation is uh, sorry. No, no, but what is the circuit? What is the DAG? So, the DAG is uh, you you add let me let me skip the arrows. So, you first compute uh, x 1 plus x 2, yeah, then you use the output right, then you use the output twice to multiply right. So, this will give you uh, square x 1 x plus x 2 square and you can do it once again and that will give you that will give you x 1 plus x 2 is 4. So, the 4 is computed but you also wanted 8 right. So, for that let us do it once again. So, now you have both 4 and 8 you just have to uh, add them with sign. Right. So, this is the representation so, that is your uh, f at the root. So, there are only uh, uh, 5 intermediate vertices. So, overall the size is only well the vertices are uh, 7 and so many I think wires, but, but you can see that it is a much smaller representation than, uh, than what the polynomial in full uh, expansion is right. So, this gives you an idea that using the circuit operations you can uh, actually compress the polynomial a lot. So, one thing that we are using here is uh, this repeated squaring. So, this is a very useful technique. So, the, the circuit C, the circuit size is, is uh, small because of repeated squaring here. And uh, another example where the repeated squaring can do wonders is uh, x plus 1 to the 2 to the n. Right. So, if, if you look at x plus 1 to the 2 to the n, it has 2 to the n monomials, but by repeated squaring you can manage in uh, n gates. Right. So, if, an, if say n was 100, then this, this polynomial, it is a huge polynomial, but it has a very, very small circuit. Right. So, the circuit representation is a very natural way to compress a polynomial. Uh, obviously, it is not always possible. Right. So, the question is uh, when is when is it not possible? So, when when will all your clever techniques fail and uh, the only way to represent your polynomial would be depth to sum of monomials which is which is the worst. Right. So, that is the that, that is the foundational question in this area and uh, we still do not know the answer to that. Uh, well, we know the answer in some sense and we do not know the answer in general sense. So, we will we'll, we'll see as we proceed right. Uh, in this in this example, uh, there are two more uh, parameters resource pa pa parameters. So, one is fan in and the other is fan out. So, fan in is the maximum in degree and fan out is the maximum out degree. Okay, which in this case is uh, how much? Well, it is actually 3. There is this top uh, star which has fan out, fan out 3, but other than that it is 2. Yeah, so, so, I drew it so that it is it is close to 2. Uh, so, fan in 2 is fine, but fan out 2 is what is giving you 
the kick right because you are able to use the output uh, multiple times so you do otherwise what you will have to do is uh, you will have to copy that and the copying will double the size so when you are when copying is banned uh, then we call it a formula okay so formulas are uh, even more special than circuits so fan in respectively fan out of a circuit fan in is the max in degree respectively out degree of the graph of the dag the underlying graph no 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 so hand written representation is Complex. is formula because in a hand in this when you write by a pen on a paper yeah. then there is no way to reuse computation so what you are writing in a line that is naturally a formula on the other hand uh, the cheating that you do in a c program right it is not in a in a line so in a c program you define something call call it a variable x and then you use x in multiple places so that is a circuit okay but when you are writing uh, just an algebraic expression in a line that is a formula a program is a circuit if you look right so in a in a program like like a c program uh, an expression that you have computed once computed you can use it uh, unlimited amount of time so that is like uh, that is exactly uh, the dependency graph is like a circuit so a circuit with fan out 1 is very special and natural is called it is called a formula and there are numerous special cases of circuits which we will see in this course okay yes so any questions at this point uh so let me just define uh, uh the notion of problem solving or solving a problem using a arithmetic circuit so one thing that you may notice here is uh, the size of the input is the number of variables which is n right and for that n when you fix n on top of that you have drawn a circuit so it is conceivable that uh, for different n the circuit is different i mean obviously it has to be drawn differently because the leaves have changed right so for every so first observation is that for every input size there is a different circuit so when we talk about solving a problem or so what is the meaning of solving a problem that we we are able to actually compute a sequence of polynomials but then to compute a sequence of polynomials over different number of variables you have to give a family of circuits so this is uh, again a departure point point from turing machines in the case of turing machine just one turing machine description was given to you here you will need infinitely many uh in the worst case i mean maybe all the circuits are highly correlated and you can come up with a even more compact representation but uh, in general you have to give a circuit for every input size like time complexity of turing machine is 10 or 10 we have to bound the time yeah so in the case of turing machine if you say that for a given n there is a c program and for different n there are different c programs 
that will really be a different uh, definition of computation or resources. So, suppose you are looking at a family of polynomials f, i th polynomial is in i variables. So, this is a family of polynomials. So, this is called a problem. So, somebody has given you this uh, problem which is uh, a family of polynomials. Okay, uh, so, i h polynomial is i variate and you, to solve this problem by arithmetic circuit means that for every f i you will have to produce an i variate circuit. So, you will have to design a family of circuits. So, a family of circuits solves f if for all i c i is f i right that is all. So, this is the notion of problem solving. Uh, here the problem is uh, not a single polynomial because well if somebody gives you a single polynomial then uh, n is fixed. If n is fixed then uh, everything can be done in constant size right. So, that does not really give you asymptotics. So, to get asymptotics you actually need a sequence of growing arity, uh, infinitely growing and for that then you have to look at the circuit family and then you have to talk about sizes of these C i's, how is that growing with i. So, using that using this now we can define complexity classes and we can define what is hard and what is easy. Okay, so, the notions notion of uh, hard polynomials, easy polynomials will now be based on uh, this uh, formalism of family. But many times for simplicity of discussion, we will ignore the term family. We will just say a polynomial, but when I write a polynomial, it would be implicit that I am not talking about a single polynomial, but all such polynomials for growing n. Okay? So, it will be implicit, we will not use this rigorous notation all the time because it, it becomes a mouthful to say that there is an infinite family of circuit polynomials, infinite family of circuits. <coughs> so, it will be implicit from now on. <coughs> Any questions? Yes. So, uh, so, so, we looked at the square order this one to the 2 to the n right? mm -hmm. and we were allowed to copy, so we had a small n size circuit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, but when we have a formula, we will have to create copies at So, it yeah, so you can lower you can lower bound it by looking at the degree parameters. So, formulas cannot uh, exponentially blow up the degree. So, formulas are actually uh, very slow with the degree. Uh, so, whatever if the size of a formula is s, then the degree you can show is uh, some polynomial in s, it cannot be more. But circuits can really blow up the degree can blow up to 2 raise s raise to s, because it can, it can keep on multiplying the thing to itself again and again that is repeated squaring. Uh, yeah, that is a good point.